Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to carry on going through our gas laws and our ideal gas laws. So we got as far as talking about the general gas equation in the last lesson. We'd spoken about um, the laws that they came up. We had P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. We had V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And we had P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. So it seemed pretty obvious that we could combine all three of these. And again, the only units that make a difference are these that have to be in Kelvin. As long as the pressures are in the same units and as long as the volumes are in the same units, you do not need to change them. Um, but temperature always has to be in Kelvin because these equations are worked out on the Kelvin scale. So let's do an example. It's probably the easiest way for you guys to get practice with using these equations. So it says a balloon is filled with helium gas at 27 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got a balloon and it's filled with helium gas at 27 degrees Celsius, which needs to immediately be changed into Kelvin, um, at a pressure of one atmosphere. And the volume of the balloon, as the balloon rises, okay, the volume of the balloon increases by a factor of 1.6, okay? So the volume, yeah, let the volume be V, then yeah, do you agree the V new is going to be 1 comma 6 the original volume. It increases by a factor of 1.6, that's 1 1.6 times the original volume. The temperature has decreased to 15 degrees Celsius. The temperature now is 15 degrees Celsius. And then what to know, what is the final pressure? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to list our P1, V1, T1. And we're going to list out P2, V2, T2. So pressure one is going to be one atmosphere. The volume one we're going to like be V. Temperature we need to change. So we're going to go 27 plus 273, which is going to be three and seven is a naught, and seven and two, so that's 300 Kelvin. Okay. The temperature now is 15 degrees. It's 15 plus 273, sorry, which is 285. No, it's not. <laughs> sorry. Um, let's fix that. Um, wait, what pen are we using? 273 is going to be 8 and 7 and 1, 288. That's much better. 288 Kelvin. The volume, the new volume is 1 comma 6 times the original volume and P2 is what we're trying to work out. So we're going to use the equation P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2, right? Therefore we can say 1 times by V all over 300 is equal to P2, we don't know what the second pressure is, times by 1 comma 6 V all over 288. So do you agree that since the V's are on both sides, left and the right hand side, we can cancel? Because effectively we could divide both the left hand side and the right hand side by V. So that cancels, so that's quite nice. So therefore we've got 1 over 300, okay, times by 288 divided by 1 comma 6 is equal to P2. What I've done is I've said, okay, when I take this across, it becomes a times, and when I take that across, it becomes a divide. Right, so therefore P2 is equal to, so let's go find our calculator. So we're going to go... Um, let's switch it on, it's a good start. And we're going to go 1 over 300 times another fraction of 288 over 1.6 
and that equals three fifths or naught comma six. The pressure is now naught comma six atmospheres. And we do expect the pressure to be going down because the temperature has gone down and the volumes increased. So if the temperature's gone down and the volumes increase, and obviously pressure is going to decrease as well. So that is a cool question. All right, let's try another one. It says 25 cubic centimeters of gas at one atmosphere has a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So we immediately going to go, well, that is equal to, what is that, 273, um, 273, what is that? That's going to be 298. So that's 298 Kelvin. Okay, so that is what that temperature is. When the gas is compressed to 20 cubic centimeters, the temperature of the gas increases to 28 degrees Celsius. So now it is three more than it was before. So it's 301 Kelvin. And they want to know what is the final pressure. So again, they want to work out what the pressure is. So this time we've got P1, V1, T1, and we've got P2, V2, T2. And I know that we're using P1, V1, T1 as our formula at the moment. So it's pretty obvious that we're going to be using these. But in the exams, they're going to mix up the questions. And you won't know immediately when you start reading these questions whether you're going to use the formula that we used over here, which was P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2, or um, PV equals NRT, which is the formula that I'm going to teach you next. So it's always good to write down your variables so you can see what you got, and then you can work out which formula you need. So the volume in this case is 25 cubic centimeters. And remember I said to you, you don't have to change this as long as they're both cubic centimeters in both cases. In this case it is, the volume is 20. Yeah, the gas has an atmosphere pressure of one, pressure of one atmosphere, and the temperature is 298 Kelvin. And yet yeah, the pressure we're trying to find out and the temperature is 301 Kelvin. Okay, so let us substitute in. So P1 is one times V1, which is 25, over P1, V1 over T1, 298, is equal to P2 multiplied by 20 divided by 301. Right, so we're solving for P2, so we need to get everything onto the else on the other side. So therefore, do you agree that you've got 25 times 301 all over 298 times 20 is P2? And then we can pop that in our calculator. So if we do that, we've got, let's clear this. We've got 25 times 301 equals divided by bracket 298 times 20. Hmm, that did not work at all. 298 times. Hmm, I need a bracket, don't I? Delete, 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 delete. Bracket 298 times 20, close bracket, equals, and that gives you a new pressure of 1.26. So this time the pressure has gone up, which we expected. So P2 is 1,26 atmospheres. And why did I expect the pressure to go up? Because the volume has gone down and the temperature has gone up. So obviously the pressure will have gone up as well. Right, now we need to learn about the ideal gas equation. Now the ideal gas equation is the only one where you have to make sure that you get every single thing right in this, okay? In other words, you have to make sure you get all the units right. So pressure has to be in pascals, the volume has to be in decimeters cubed, the number of moles is obviously just numbers, R is a constant, T has to be in Kelvin. So pressure in pascals and volume in decimeters cubed. So let's look at an example of how to use PV equals NRT. Um, so let's write it down, PV equals NRT. It says carbon dioxide, which is CO2 gas, is produced as a result of the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Okay. The gas that is produced is collected in a 
contain an unknown volume. The pressure of the gas is 105 kilopascals at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. If the number of moles is 0.86 moles, what is the volume? Okay, so we've got carbon dioxide. We want P, V, N, R, and T. Now, R is a constant, which is set at 8,31. Right, now, what do they want? They says the pressure of the gas is 105 kilopascals. That's 105 kilopascals. We'll worry about that in a minute. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So we're immediately going to add 273 to get to 93 Kelvin. If the number of moles of gas is 0.86, what is the volume? So everything's fine yet except for the pressure. This is in kilopascals and the correct answer has to be in pascals, in pascals. So therefore we need to times this by a thousand. So this is equal to 105,000 pascals. Okay, and now we can just substitute in. We've got PV equals NRT. We are solving for V, so do you agree V is equal to NRT over V over P? So we can say N is the number, which is 0.86. R is 8,31. T is 293 over the volume, oh sorry, over the pressure, which is 105,000. So let's find out what that is by getting out our calculator. So let's make a fraction. So we got 0 0.86 multiplied by 8.31 multiplied by 293 equals, oh yes, but I did not do the bottom bit, sorry. Let's try again. So we've got 0 0.86, 0 0.86 multiplied by 8.31 multiplied by 293, all divided by 105 and then three zeros equals 0, 0, 0, 0,2. Okay, so it's 0, 0, 0, 0,2. So the volume is 0, 0, 0, 0,2 decimeters cubed. So there you go. There we have we get the answer. V is 0, 0, 0, 0,2 decimeters cubed. Okay, excellent. I'm sorry, I need to cough just a second. Two learners investigate the relationship between the temperature and the pressure of an enclosed gas. This is an old exam paper question from an old grade 11 paper. Um, so let's go and have a look at this. It says two learners investigate the relationship between the temperature and pressure of an enclosed gas. The learners use different samples of the same gas in two identical containers of fixed volumes. Graph P and graph Q below represent the results obtained by the learners. So you've got pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. And the first question says state guy lussacs law. Okay, now guys, there are three laws. There's Boyle's law, Charles's law, and guy lussacs law. Um, and I know that my students struggle with these, okay, but let's give you a little bit of a hint. First of all, you know that they're related, and this is on the formula sheet, that P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Okay, now do you see that this is pressure and temperature? So obviously, in this question, we're actually relating P1 over T1 to equal P2 over T2. Okay, so that is what we're relating at the moment using constant volume, and it says it's fixed volumes. Okay, so the guy lussac law is obviously looking at the relationship of pressure and temperature, and you can see that these are straight line equations. So, therefore, you can say that guy lussacs law would be that for a fixed volume of gas, as the temperature is 
increase, so the pressure will increase and vice versa. Okay, do you understand that? So by just working out what they're asking, okay, about like pressure and temperature, and then looking at this formula, you can work out what the proportion is and what the ratio, ratio is. Okay, now it says use the law in question 5.2.1. Determine the value of temperature X on the graph. Okay, so do you agree that we've got pressure and temperature here? And yeah, we've got pressure, but we don't have the temperature. So again, the only thing that you make sure is that the temperature is in Kelvin. You don't have to worry about if it's kilopascals or pascals, whatever. So do you agree P1 would be 100 over 298 is equal to P2, which is 150, over T2, which is what X is. We need to find that out. So I could say that let's flip both of them. So 298 over 100 is equal to T2 over 150, right? Therefore, 298 multiplied by 150 over 100 is equal to T2. Right, and now we need a calculator. So we can say 298 multiplied by 150 equals divided by 100 equals equals so the temperature is now 447 Kelvin. So this temperature is 447 Kelvin. Okay, that X temperature. But they say in degrees Celsius, they say determine the value of the temperature in degrees Celsius. So we haven't finished. What do we have to do? We have to take 447 and minus 273. That would give us a 4 and a 14 minus 7 is a 7 and a 1. So it's 174 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now to explain why using the relative formula y graph q has a smaller the gradient than graph p. So it says to learn to investigate the relationship between the temperature and pressure of an enclosed gas. Learn to use different samples of the same gas in two identical containers um, of fixed volumes. Okay, so using the same gas. Okay, so let's have a look at this formula uh, PV equals NRT. Hang on a minute, no, just erase something. Um, let's just erase this bit. Obviously, we can't use this formula because that's not going to help us to understand it. But if we had to use ideal gas law, Okay, which says that PV, right, PV equals NRT. So therefore we can say P is equal to NRT over V. So obviously then as the pressure goes up, so the temperature goes up, okay? But now what we can see is they've kept the volume fixed. That's fixed. Okay, but it did say that even though they got the same gas, okay, it says they used different samples of the same gas. What could possibly have changed? The only thing that could have changed, R is a constant. So the only thing that could have changed is N. So Q, they've used a smaller number of moles. They've used a smaller amount of exactly the same gas to get that there, that Q, compared to that P there. Okay, understand. Right, let's move on. A certain gas has a mass of 2.2 grams. Okay. So a certain gas has a mass of 2.2 grams, occupies a volume of 0.831 decimeters cubed at 27 degrees Celsius, 273. 27 plus 273 is going to be 300 Kelvin and a pressure of 150 kilopascals. It says calculate the molar mass of the gas. Assume that the gas behaves in the ideal gas. Okay, so what they're doing, they're doing the hinting that we need to use PV equals NRT. 
Why are we doing that? Well, we've got the mass. So if we can find the number of moles of the gas, then we can work out the molar mass. Because number of moles equals mass divided by molar mass. So that works the other way around as well. So we've got the pressure, we've got the volume, we've got the constant, and we've got the temperature. So therefore we can easily find N. So let's do that. We've got PV over RT is equal to N. P is the pressure, which is 150 kilopascals. But now you can see that this is using PV equals NRT, so it has to be 150,000 pascals. So it's 150,000 pascals. The volume is in decimals cubed, so life is good. So it's 0,831. Rydberg's constant, or the just general gas equation, is 8,31. And the temperature is 300 Kelvin. Okay, so let's find the number of moles. So let's get out our calculator and we can go 150, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 0 0.831. Oh, that did not work at all. So let's go see 150, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 0 0.831. 831 equals divided by bracket 8.31 multiplied by 300 close bracket equals so answer is 50 so the number of moles of gas that we have is 50 okay so now we know that the number of moles is 50, but we know that the number of moles is mass over molar mass. And we are told that we've got 2.2 grams of this. So therefore we can say that the molar mass is equal to mass over the number of moles. But the mass is what? Is 2.2 grams. So it's 2,2 divided by 50, which equals what? So let's get out our calculator. So we've got 2.2 divided by 50 is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.044. And obviously this is kilograms. So we have to convert it into grams. So therefore it is going to be 44 grams. It says write down the molecular formula or name of the gas in equation 5.3.1. So 44 and gases, okay? So even if the gas behaves like an ideal gas and they want 44, carbon dioxide, CO2, is going to be two times 16 is 32 plus carbon, which is 12, which is 44. There you go. But they won't necessarily ask that question unless they just had space for bonus two marks, okay? Nice question, hey? Now let's talk about the quantitative aspects for chemical change. So what we really are going on to is talking about the molar volume of gases. We need to work through some more stoichiometry and the only way we can do that is if we start here. So let me explain what happens. STP, first of all, is standard temperature and pressure. That is the definition. STP is standard temperature and pressure. And the temperature is 273 Kelvin, and the pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. Okay, the amount of gas that is usually held at that temperature and that pressure is one mole. Okay, so one mole of gas, it occupies a space at a temperature of 273 Kelvin and a pressure of 101.3 kilopascals. Now, if you're using PV equals RT, you can see that we can have P is 101.3 kilopascals, which is 101,300 pascals. The number of moles is obviously a 1, because we're getting PV equals in RT, right? R is 8.31, and T is 273. Okay, so using that equation, PV equals NRT, we can work out what the volume is. Let's do it. We've got P is, 
we want it in Pascals, right? It's 101, 300. V equals N, which is 1, times by R, which is 8,31, times by the temperature, which is 273 Kelvin. So if we divide the V into that, so we've got 8,31 times by 273 divided by 101,300 is equal to Okay, 8.31 multiplied by 273 equals divided by 101, 101, 300 equals 0, 0.022. Okay, so that's 0, 0.022. What did I just do? So therefore the volume is 0, 0, 22 cubic meters. So therefore that's going to be 22,4 decimeters cubed. Yay, nice one. So now we've proven that the molar volume of gas, any gas at room temperature or at STP is 22.4 decimeters cubed. So now let's see if we can use that to solve a problem. It says what volume of oxygen at SDP is needed for the complete combustion of 3,3 decimeters cubed of propane. So the first thing we need to do is write a balance equation. So what C3H8 burns in oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So now the very first thing we need to do is we need to balance this equation. Because obviously, um, for the complete combustion, we need to use up all of this. Okay, so three moles of carbon, one, so let's put a three in front of that. But now that gives you six. Okay, wait, hang on. Then we've got eight moles of hydrogen over here, and there's two here, so put a four in front of that. Then let's have a look at that. We now have six oxygens and eight oxygens. Um, no, it's six oxygens and four oxygens, which makes 10 oxygens, so we can times that by two. So let's check three carbon, three carbon, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, six and, wait, six and four is 10, and that's 10 as well. Excellent. So we've now got a beautiful balanced reaction. Now it says, what volume of oxygen at SCP is needed for the complete combustion of 3,3 decimeters cubed of propane. So what do they want? They want to know how much would this work out to be if we use this on 3.3 decimeters cubed of propane. So the volume is 3,3 decimeters cubed. So first of all, we need to convert this to moles, but we know that the molar volume of any gas is 22.4 decimeters cubed, right? So if we use the fact that 3.3 decimeters cubed of some substance, um, sorry, if 3.3 decimeters cubed of the propane is used, okay, we gain to end up having used it all, but end up having made um, a number of moles. So now we need to work out the number of moles. So the number of moles is mass over molar mass, or it is the, num the mo number of moles that we have over the molar volume. So the number of moles we have is 3,3 over the molar volume, which is 22,4. So now we need a calculator. So we're going to go 3.3 divided by 22.4, no, 22, no, 22.4 equals, and that comes to 0 0.15 moles. So we're using up 0 0.15 moles of propane. Now the ratio is one, to three. One mole of propane gives me three moles of carbon dioxide um, and it gives me needs, but we asked about oxygen. 
So therefore, we need to look at this ratio here. So one mole of C3H8 needs five moles of oxygen. But we don't have one mole. We've got 0, 0,15 moles. Okay, and what do we need? We need five times 0, 0,15 moles, which is 0, 0,75 moles. Right, 0, 0,75 moles. So what we're looking for is 0, 0,75 moles of oxygen. But they've asked you for the volume. And you know that the molar volume is 22.4 decimeters cubed. So therefore, we can take our 0, 0,75 and we can multiply it by 22,4 to find out the volume of oxygen that's needed. So let's do that. So we're going to take out our calculator and we go 0, 0.75 multiplied by 22.4. No, 2.4. And we say equals, and we get 16.8. So 16.8, 16.8 decimeters cubed of oxygen at SCP is needed to completely combust 3.3 decimeters cubed of propane. Okay then, it's got a lot of oxygen. Right, now let's talk about concentration problems. So Concentration is number of moles over volume, okay? Number of moles over volume. And it's usually something like moles per decimeter cubed or moles per centimeter cubed and so on and so on. In this case, case, it says how much sodium chloride in grams will one need to prepare 500 cubic centimeters of a standard solution with a concentration of 0 0.01 moles decimeter cubed. Okay, so concentration is number of moles over volume. We've already said that the concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed, right? Which means that the volume has to be in decimeters cubed. So we need to convert this 500 cubic centimeters into decimeters cubed by dividing by 1,000. So that's going to be 0, 0,5. That's the V. Now, they've given us a concentration of 0, 0, 0,01. That's our concentration. So we can work out the number of moles. Do you agree? So N is equal to CV. So concentration, we've just worked out is 0, 0, 0, 0,01. We've been given that. And the volume we worked out was 0, 0,5. So therefore, the number of moles, hang on, is 0.01, nope, 0.1, multiplied by 0.5. Oh, let's go up, down, and cross. Put a stop in it. Then go equals, that's better. It's 1 over 200 or 0, 0, 0, 0.005. So it's 0, 0, 0, 0.005 moles. Okay? But what did they ask? They asked for the amount in grams, not in moles. So we know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. Therefore, mass is the number of moles times by molar mass. <clears throat> so we've got the number of moles, it's 0, 0, 0, 0.005 multiplied by the molar mass. Now the molar mass, this is sodium chloride. Now I've said to you repeatedly guys that you guys need to make sure that you've got your periodic tables with you so that you can look the stuff up when we're going through it. Sodium's molar mass is 11, oh, sorry 23, 23 and chlorine's molar mass is 35,5 so therefore, that is an 8 and 2 and 3 is 5. So it's 58,8. That is 58,5. So what does that work out to be? Let's look at it. It becomes that 0, 0,05 multiplied by 58,5. No. 0.5 equals. And we get an answer of 0.29. 
So that's 0, 0,29 grams. Sure. Okay. So there you go. We worked out the um, concentration solution, concentration calculation. We worked out how much sodium chloride is required to dissolve in this. Okay, before we move on to titrations, I think we're going to stop now and we'll carry on with this next week, Tuesday, because titrations is a whole new section. Um, and I've realized I actually want to show you a video of a titration. Right, great. Um, 11s, have a great day. Cheers.